The 3D Mario series is by far and away Nintendo's most prestigious series. Each game in the series is like a new chapter telling the story of that console generation and its player base. Nintendo doesn't just throw out 3D Mario games willy-nilly. They take their time and create beautifully crafted pieces of art that stand the test of time. While Odyssey is still fresh in many of our minds, it's quickly approaching its seventh anniversary. All signs are pointing towards a new 3D Mario game being somewhat on the horizon. A new Nintendo console seems all but confirmed to be at least announced this year. And even if it's not, it's 3D Mario O'Clock. The biggest drought in the series' history was only six years in between 64 and Sunshine. And even if you count Bowser's Fury as a full main entry, that came out three years ago at this point. You can't tell me something hasn't been cooking at Nintendo HQ right now. And our goal today is to uncover exactly that. What will the next 3D Mario game look like? Will it be Super Mario Odyssey 2 or something completely new? Stay tuned and welcome to the future of 3D Mario. If we're going to talk about any of the options, we literally have to start with Super Mario Odyssey 2. I'm not sure there's been a game more talked about on Earth that literally has zero proof of its existence. Nintendo has only made a sequel to a 3D Mario game once, and that's because they were making DLC for the first game, and it would be more profitable just to make an entirely new game. However, did we ever get Odyssey DLC? I guess so. We got Luigi's Balloon World and, you know, a few costumes here and there, but no new moons, captures, or kingdoms. What happened here? There were plenty of ideas they could have expanded on. Some kingdoms like Cloud and Ruined are just glorified boss arenas, yet setting-wise, they had so much going for them. Capture-wise, they could have expanded on that concept for over 50 years. The fact that in all likelihood we'll never be able to capture DK and roam around New Donk City is tragic. The only thing making me believe that they probably were just burnt out on Odyssey at that point are the moons. There are over 836 moons in the game, not including all the shop moons that get you to 999. That's gotta take a toll on a developer, even of the size of Nintendo, and going straight into sequel mode would not be first on their agenda. But let's say it was. Let's say Super Mario Odyssey 2 started development immediately after its original release. Let's discuss Super Mario Odyssey 2. Well, in classic Nintendo fashion, there would have to be a gimmick. Something that isn't just, look here, we made the same game but with more stuff. I think if Super Mario Odyssey 2 were to actually exist, it would have to break the mold and do something bold. Something fans are clamoring for, but not in the way they would exactly expect. What if Odyssey 2 was was co-op. Not just Mario and Cappy, but Mario and Luigi. Now, I know what you're saying, they already did that in 3D World, but this time, it's way different. In this one, there isn't just the goal to get to the flagpole. In this, Mario and Luigi, along with Cappy and, uh, Hatbert, yet again travel around the world using the Odyssey to visit new and old locations. I think having a multiplayer focus that strives for deep communication during platforming challenges and puzzles could make this game unlike anything Nintendo has ever made. Think It Takes Two, but with Odyssey's buttery smooth controls. While I'd love to see this, I'm not sure how willing Nintendo would be to completely abandon the single player option. They are definitely ones to take risk, but with their biggest franchise, I wouldn't necessarily put it past them. If anything, Mario is where they take the risks. Flood, planets, mitosis. Nintendo is down to get weird with Mario, so who's to say that a single player series has to remain single player? So great, co-op Mario. But how is this still Odyssey 2? Well, let's discuss new captures. First one, obviously, is Mario and Luigi themselves. I can already imagine all the chaos with capturing each other and taking over the other person's controls. If picking up your friends and throwing them off a cliff in 3D World wasn't already fun, capturing your friend and then walking them off a cliff is going to be even better. But joke answers aside, what captures could we actually see? Personally, I would absolutely adore playing as a bob -omb. Now, that would be quite tricky to implement as using their abilities would just kill you, but I'm sure they could figure out some unique way to implement a puzzle around it, especially since lives don't really matter anymore. I also want to think about adding some new characters that would work well with the co-op puzzles. Something like a piranha plant that shoots out platforms, for the other player to try and jump across to add some unique platforming challenges to this game. But also, what kingdoms could we see? Would they all be new ones, or would there be some expanded upon fan favorites from this game? Firstly, if Odyssey 2 does indeed exist, it would literally require New Donk City. If New Donk City isn't in there, scrap the whole project. We don't want it. While I'm obviously kidding, bringing back fan favorites like Metro Kingdom and expanding upon 
them seems like an obvious decision. It would make for perfect post-game material like what we got with Mushroom Kingdom. However, that's not the only thing I could see making a return. Isle Delfino seems like a literal lock for a potential Odyssey 2. This has been talked to death, but Isle Delfino was literally in the promotional material for this game, yet never actually seemingly existed. Was that just some promotional artist taking liberties with their work, or was there actually something in the works? We may never really know, however, what we do know is Isle Delfino is the most well thought out setting this series has ever seen, and just having Delfino Plaza would be incredible. Speaking of Sunshine, let's quickly talk about the possibilities of other sequels coming soon. While I'd love to see a 64 sequel, it's time has passed. Unless we get the Battle for Bikini Bottom treatment and get a remake into a sequel, I give it a very low possibility. For Sunshine, I think we could actually get a spiritual successor. Not necessarily utilizing Flood or Al Delfino as a setting, but taking the groundwork of a well thought out environment with a unique culture and typography could be something I actually see them doing in the near future. Galaxy 3 on the other hand is just not happening. I'm sorry everybody, but it's too Wii coded. Shooting star bits, shaking your Wiimote, it was perfect for the time, but not today. 3D Land and 3D World I could actually see getting a new entry. It almost feels like its own branch of the Mario timeline at this point. Not quite a 3D game, but not quite a 2D game. This 2.5D series of Mario games, in my opinion, are Nintendo's bread and butter. I love Odyssey, and I'm liking Wonder, but 2.5D Mario seems so effortless for them. So if Super Mario 3D Universe is the next game, I personally won't be shocked. But there's one game we haven't talked about so far, and I'm not sure y'all are expecting it. That's right, Super Mario 64 DS2. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Bowser's Fury. Bowser's Fury is the best Mario game for all six of its hours, and that's really it. When ranking it alongside the others, it's kind of like ranking a Reese's piece versus a whole ass Reese's cup. Yeah, sure, Reese's pieces are really good, but can I really rank them any higher than Reese's cups? I don't think so. So how do we fix that? Well, it's simple. Let's take the groundwork and foundation Bowser's Fury is built on and build it out to be a full on game. So first, let's lay out why exactly Bowser's Fury works. Firstly, it's an open world. That much is simple. But why does this open world not feel empty? Because it's set on a lake. It sounds stupid, but imagine if Lake Lapcat was just Lapcat Park and there was just green grass separating all the areas. It would feel so much more empty. Instead, they made travel fun with the use of Plessy. So what we need to learn from this is how to make fun modes of travel that don't make the space between areas boring. Next, we need to figure out why exactly these mini levels worked. Each mini level had five cat shines. After finding them all and restoring the lighthouse, the next mini level is unlocked. Why does this work? Well, there's over a hundred cat shines in this game, and not one of them feels forced or shoehorned in. Each one serves the purpose of propelling you towards the main objective, rather than the shines themselves being the objectives. Mini objectives inside of main objectives inside of the overarching objective make Bowser's Fury really never have a dull moment. This displacement of objectives is balanced and can be tackled in any order the player wants. I'm not saying Bowser's Fury invented this, I'm just saying they did a really great job at it. And if we're gonna see a sequel or spiritual successor to it, I'm expecting its pacing and structure to be just as good as the original. However, one thing's gotta change. Bowser's Fury is notable for its Fury Bowser fights, with every few moments Fury Bowser rising from the goop and causing chaos in Lake Lapcat. While the boss fight is indeed pretty neat, do we really want Bowser interrupting whatever we are just doing over and over and over again? I think Fury Bowser boss fights can stay in Bowser's Fury. What we've got written down so far is an open world, fun transportation, nesting doll-like objectives, and no Fury Bowser pausing gameplay every five minutes. So let's expand on that. Firstly, as an open world game, this Bowser's Fury inspired game will need many different locations. Lake Lapcat worked great for Bowser's Fury, but in this open world Mario game, there's going to need to be more variety in location. Think Isle Delfino. Many different locations with many different themes, but all connected by the same tropical paradise theme. Now that I think about it, let's continue with this thought process. Imagine traversing Isle Delfino and hitching a ride on a blooper or hiring a taxi to take you from place to place. The goal of this game is to make a massive open world that feels lived in and interesting, something to discover naturally and not on rails. Imagine Odyssey without the level select, and Bowser's Fury with multiple levels. That to me sounds like the perfect 3D Mario game. However, I think there's one more route they could take. I've talked about Odyssey 2 and a Bowser's Fury successor, and while both of those sound 
super fun, there's still one itching in the back of my mind that I can't help but blurt out. Super Mario Online. All over YouTube, I see these Mario Odyssey multiplayer mods, and I'm just in awe of how the possibilities of a game like this could be just so, so fun. Whether it be mini games, PvP, community built creative projects, or even a massive multiplayer story mode, Super Mario Online could have the potential to change Mario games forever. But don't take my word for it. Look how video games have evolved over the past decade or so. Whether it be Minecraft, Fortnite, or even their very own Mario Maker. The ability to form communities based around a game and have your very own users create content for it is something that makes these games unlike anything they've done before. We've talked about this in the past, but a 3D Mario Maker is something I actually think is very likely. Don't expect full-on games to be made, but platforming challenges and puzzles built by the community would be insanely cool. I can already see a getting over it-esque Mario level being a possibility, and I would be so ready to rage over it for hours. However, that's not all I could see. Super Mario Online implies that we would have online multiplayer, but how could they implement this? Through the use of many different public servers, there are so many mini-games they could add. Hide and Seek is an obvious must-have, so would an Infection or Battle Royale style mode, but also a power-up brawl with many past classics returning such as the Wing Cap, Flood, and Cat Mario would just be so incredible to see. Seeing the worlds of Mario collide would be such an incredible way not to just celebrate this great series, but also maybe celebrate Mario's 40th anniversary. That's right, the 35th anniversary feels like yesterday, but just next year, Mario will be turning 40, and besides being able to finally put down a mortgage on a house, Mario will have survived through four decades of the video game industry. In such decades, we saw Mario innovate from being the master of the Y-axis, to opening the floodgates into the third dimension, to cementing himself as one of the most well-known mascots in gaming. But what we haven't seen from Mario is a full-on fledged attack towards online gaming. Sure, we've seen many online modes similar to Couch Co-op of years before, but a game dedicated to a modern multiplayer audience? That just hasn't been his domain. Sure, I could see the arguments that Nintendo doesn't really want the trouble that would come from needing to moderate and upkeep an online game. Hell, they don't even want to finish most of their games these days. But I know they've got the skill, and I'd like to see them take a swing at it. So, the future of 3D Mario. Is it a sequel? Is it a reimagining? Or is it a step in a whole new direction? We won't know until we see it with our own eyes. But that's what's fun about the future. It's up to our own interpretations. So, please, before you go, let me know your thoughts down below and what 3D Mario game you'd like to see next. And if you still got time, check out this video right here ranking every single capture in Mario Odyssey. Alright, I'll see you next time. Bye!